as this is the last Jumu'ah of the month of Ramadan of this year. It might be the last in our life, but what we know for sure, it's a great opportunity to pray Jumu'ah in the month of Ramadan, and this is the last one. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless it for us, to answer our du'as as we pray for his mercy, for his forgiveness, and that we are delivered and saved from hellfire. We bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and messenger. Beloved brothers in Islam and Iman, we have focused a lot, all of us, in, on the topic of taqwa, because that's what the ayat in chapter 2 about fasting highlighted the most. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ This fasting is prescribed to you, as it was prescribed to those before you, so you may attain taqwa, self-restraint, consciousness of Allah, self-discipline. All these meanings and words are encompassed in the word taqwa. And then, of course, Allah wrapped up the verses, the ayat, about fasting by saying, كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ This is how Allah shows His signs for humanity. So they may gain this consciousness of Allah. Having said that, this is the goal. But there is the goal of the goal. There is something beyond that. Why do we need taqwa? Because taqwa will lead us to the ultimate goal. And this is the ultimate, and I repeat, the ultimate goal, which is al-qurbu min Allah. Nearness to Allah. The closer we are to Allah, the more peace we feel, even if we are in the worst moments of fear, disruption, you know, whatever phobias are there, we can handle them so long as we are close to Allah. And this is the reason why we fast Ramadan. And this is what we should look for as we bring this fasting to its end. That we become closer to Allah. And if humanity is closer to Allah, and I mean it in every sense of the word, closer because we are coming from Allah. We are from Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We are from Allah. We belong to Allah. And to Him we will return. And this is where we belong. We don't belong here. We don't belong. Our bodies are from Adam. Which means Turab. Which means clay. That's why our father's name is Adam. But ar-ruh wa nafaktu fihi min ruhi. Allah put the soul. The body decays, doesn't come back. But the ruh never dies. Therefore, we don't really die when we die. It's only our body that dies. We go back to Allah. Unless, wal-ayyadu billah, we are stopped at the gates of heaven and rejected and tormented until the day of judgment, which is known as Adab al Qabr, which is a state, a spiritual state of rejection and torment. Like you wake up from a very bad dream. You know, if you don't have enough oxygen in your brain, most likely you will have Adghathu Ahlam. You will have bad dreams. The day you have cold, 
and you have stuffy nose, you will see bad dreams. This is fact. Oh, I saw vision, I see monsters, because you need oxygen in your brain. Huh? The day you have low iron, you will see bad dreams. And this is why you have bad dreams. You know, visions are totally different. But that's a different topic. But there will be a bad, very bad, tormenting dream. All of us had that experience. And we say, Alhamdulillah, it was only a bad dream. And of course, there is torment. However, going back, every messenger of Allah and every warith al rasul, a scholar who inherits knowledge in Al uh, Anbiya, Lam Yurithu. Dinaran wala wala dirhama wala kinnahum yuwarithuna al ilm faman akhadha bihi akhadha bi hadhin wafir that the messengers don't leave behind and prophets of Allah wealth of gold and silver but they leave behind them knowledge and knowledge whoever takes it will have the best portion of this life and the hereafter and hence, the closest thing that will bring you to Allah, the best is knowledge. The more knowledge huh, you have of the deen, or of the dunya that brings you to the deen, to service, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah raises higher, closer to him, those who believe, but even more, those who believe and have knowledge. So that's a way Iblis was a pious person. He was a jinn. And he had lusts and desires like a human being, not like angels. But because of his hard work and knowledge, Allah raised him higher than any other creation a part of course from the angels and put him with the angels nobody has reached that high in piety as Iblis and Allah said it إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ but because of his weakness because of jealousy and arrogance and self-glorification he fell down. Huh? The higher you go, the harder you fall. This is the story of life. And even Iblis, in spite of his intelligence and piety, he fell big time down to the lowest place in hellfire. Then this is why in Ramadan we are seeking taqwa, but taqwa not. Looking at it, and this is unfortunately majority of Muslims. They look at Ramadan as a shower. I'm waiting for Ramadan to wash out my sins, wash off these sins, and I'll dirty up later. But now I need to get washed and cleaned. But that's not the reason why we go through Ramadan. We should look at Ramadan like an elevator taking us to higher levels and wait for another occasion to take another elevator to go even higher until we reach the peak especially before we die and the longer we live the longer we thank Allah that he's given us opportunities to go higher and higher and higher and higher and grow in the obedience of Allah so think of Ramadan as an elevator more and in that elevator there is a shower how about that have you ever seen a shower with elevator that would be the best situation think you are being showered and cleaned while we're going high that's how you should look. but many of us know i want this much reward i read this book says you get this much and you get that we are trying to do business with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is not bad would you like to know of a, a commerce, of a trade with Allah that will save you from hellfire? You believe in Allah and His Messenger. And so on and the ayah. So why do we fast? To gain taqwa. Why do we need taqwa? 
to come closer to Allah. Do we have to ask why do we need to come closer to Allah? Every messenger of Allah, his main mission was to do two things. Bring people closer to Allah and bring people closer to one another. When you read the Quran, this is the lesson. Why do we have to do all of these things? What was the mission of every prophet of Allah and messenger of Allah? Is to bring people closer to Allah. With all these acts of worship, these ibadat, and all acts of goodness, and at the same time, islah versus ifsad. Huh? That's why all the messengers of Allah, they say, Islah. Huh? Aslihu fil ard. Don't corrupt on earth. Don't destroy. Don't, uh, you know, uh, eat what is not yours. Don't take what's not yours. Huh? Give back the trust to those who trusted you. Keep mentioning God and remembering Him so you don't touch what is not yours. And this is the reason why we have to come closer to Allah. And when you bring people closer to Allah, children and parents, that's why we say in Eid, in Ramadan, when we go to Hajj, we remind people to, what to do? To reconcile, to ask forgiveness, to apologize. Siblings, younger ones, go to the elder ones. You know, as respect. Children go to the parents. You know, husbands and wives, reconcile, forgive me. I was a jerk. I shouldn't have said what I said. Forgive me. I wasn't kind to you. I was demanding. That's why this reconciliation. And when we forgive in Ramadan, we get more forgiveness because it's multiplied. This is the reason why he said to Aisha when she asked him what would be the best thing. He said, just ask Allah forgiveness. And you have also to love forgiveness because Allah loves forgiveness. And when you love forgiveness, you are, they say it's a best dicker. It trains the heart to, to be softened and also be able. They say the sign of acceptance of someone being forgiven is that he is willing to forgive others. A person who says, no, I don't want to forgive them. At the end of Ramadan, that's a sign that he was not forgiven. But somebody says at the end of Ramadan, you'll see this in Eid a lot. Ya Allah, Udu Billah, Mishtar Rajim, and they hug each other. Astaghfirullah, Al Musamih Kareem. Allah considers the one who forgives as a generous person. That shows that this person's Ramadan and fasting has been accepted. But if you meet someone who doesn't want to forgive, Hada huwa shaqi. This is the most misfortunate person who does not forgive. Briefly, how do we become closer to Allah? Number one, knowledge. Number two, number two, sujood. When a man said, I want to be with you, Ya Rasulullah in Jannah. I love you. I want to be with you. قَالَ فَأَعِنِّي عَلَى نَفْسِكَ بِكَثْرَةِ sujood. Then, attack. Make as much sujood as you can. But if we don't make sujood, only in Ramadan, only on the night of 27, only when there is Khatmul Quran, then is someone who prays Salat every day going to be like someone who only prays in Ramadan? Wallahi thumma wallah. The one who prays regular prayers, doesn't even pray sunnah, nafila, but he's consistent. Ramadan or outside Ramadan is far higher and better than the one only who prays in Ramadan. Because Allah says, you want to come close to me? Then you do what I have asked you to do. وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي My servant cannot come close to me except with that which I have made obligatory on him or her. Then he said, وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ Then my servant, in addition to what I have asked, 
keeps doing what things I didn't ask him. Allah did not demand from us to do tarawih, did not demand from us to do sunnas and nafil. He did not. But Rasul Rasul told us, I'll show you extra. He'll make you closer to Allah. He said, then when that servant of mine does that, I love him. And watch, when I love my servant. So you see here why he said, make a lot of sujood. Make the things that you are asked, give zakat. Yes, mashallah, many of us donate in Ramadan. But first, give zakat. Haqqullah. The right of Allah. He said, you become closer to me. And after that, what happens? He says, and when I love him or her, I become the hearing with which he hears, huh? the sight with which he sees, the hand with which he strikes and touches and grabs, and the foot with which he walks. And if he asks me, I will give him. If he seeks refuge in me, I give him refuge. If he asks forgiveness, I forgive him. If he asks me anything, I give it to him. And the worst thing I hate, Allah says, Allah says, that I will punish my servant. Allahumma la tu'adhibna ya Rabb. And this is one way. The other way to bring us closer to Allah is to manifest the attributes of Allah. Allah is a Rahman. Then let's, be, let's become Ruhama. Allah is merciful. Let us become merciful. Allah is forgiven. Let us become forgiving. Allah is kind. Let us become kind. Allah becomes angry when injustice happens. We should also become angry. But angry is not bad. What's bad is when angry, anger controls you. You have to be angry, but control your anger. We don't mean angry. English is very short in terms of expression, like Arabic. Ghadab, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Ghadab means when you stand up and you're alert, that has to do with consciousness, you are, you don't like the injustice. But this means you do not become in a situation where anger becomes like a volcano, you know? Yeah? It overspills on yourself, on the mountain itself. So you, it has to be controlled. Anger is good if it's properly directed to do good and change the wrong into right. It is anger that, you know, that pushes us and trusts us to ch change. It is anger that makes us stop injustice, but it has to be done properly. Yes, Allah becomes angry. Rasulullah be uh, became angry, but you control your anger. Therefore, we manifest what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fourth thing we do, we said knowledge, sujood, huh? bringing people closer to one another, bringing people closer to Allah, and of course, the manif to manifest the, uh, the, the most important thing here is to manifest the attributes of Allah that are beautiful for us. It's not to use dua only, it's to try to be those qualities. Al jaza'u min jins al amal. You are rewarded based on how you give. If you are merciful, you'll get mercy. If you forgive, you get forgiveness. If you help the poor, you'll become rich. Huh? Allah will give you abundantly. Look at Abu Bakr as Siddiq as we celebrate these days, Laylatul Qadr. And we spoke a lot how he saw the Qadr, the value of Bilal. And he helped him, and Allah kept giving him. And he freed many, many, many slaves. Took them out of the darkness of slavery into freedom and brought them into Islam. Radiallahu anhu wa arda. This is just one example of many. But the best example is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now we end Ramadan. 
And after Eid, bye-bye. We do not see each other until next year. That is wrong. We need to get closer to one another. Last but not least, and this is the message that is shared by all the mosques today in Canada and all over. We have sent a message to warn all the community and to tell them to be alert. This division of ours, this individualism that is so deep in us, this nafsi nafsi is going to kill us. Communities that are successful in this country, they treat each other like blood brothers, even more with love. As if the ayah ruhama ubaynahum, merciful to one another, was revealed on them, not us. Therefore, nobody could dare mention their name in an ill fashion or even speak of their religion or their affiliation or their society. Nobody dares to utter a word because they know if they say something against that community, they will end up in court and they will be sued until they lose everything. But they can do that with the Muslims. What's going on in Canada, folks? I am asked questions by sisters. This is, ha this is more than ever. But I say, alhamdulillah, some of you will say, why two years ago, you, this, you're exaggerating. Well, hello. Now, there is a, a group, an army being built and organized only to destroy mosques and attack Muslims in Canada. And uh, people with baseball bats running in Mississauga and Brampton chasing Muslims. I don't want to scare you, but it is better. Fear is good. Fear makes us look here and there. When we don't have fear, we're just like this. Fear is good. I want you to be alert. It's going to be harder and harder to be Muslim in this place. So should we just pack and go back home? Or should we say, no, we should stand up. Wallahi thumma wallah. If they know that they can mess with us, they will kiss our hands. But they know they can mess. They know we're not united. They know we don't have one leadership. Huh? We are not united. We don't respect our leaders. We don't even respect our parents. We don't even respect our teachers. Huh? Let There are leaders who are qualified to be leaders in spite of the fact that they're not imams. I mean community leaders who plan and guide and lead. This is going to be now the topic of every day. They are now attacking everybody. And they are attacking people. Am I talking to the right crowd or wrong crowd? Are you aware of what I'm talking about? Raise your hands. You see, not even 50%. Because in Ramadan, Allah, alhamdulillah, you're in heaven. Or you're still on earth. You need to know what's happening. People are being beaten in the streets. Right now, groups are organized. They are talking about removing Islam from Canada and from America. What are you doing about it? They know they can mess with us. Because they know that when, we, when one of us is, is hurt, we turn the other cheek. Like those three bulls. The famous story of three bulls. The lion, and I like to say that when I see children. The lion saw these three bulls, brown, white, and black. In Arabic we say, لَقَدْ أُكِلْتُ يَوْمَ أُكِلَ الثَّوْرُ الْأَبْيَضِ It's a famous expression we say. I know it is in Farsi and Urdu, this story too. The lion saw them in the meadow grazing every day. And he, they were fat and nice, yummy for him. But he can't break that unity. They go together. They stick together. If somebody attacks them, all of them go. It's impossible to break this union. So difficult. And then, one day said, divide and conquer. He called the brown bull and the black bull and said, if you 
listen to me, I have something very important. The hunters are coming tonight. And if you are there, you're black, you can't be seen at night. Brown, nobody can see you, but your white brother will be seen from far away. Therefore, if the hunters come tonight, I'll give you the sign, run away. Your brother will call you, ignore his call. Night came, lion waited, and then he called them, give them the signal. They left, and then he attacked the white bull. The white bull said, you are putting yourself in trouble. I'll call my brothers, we'll finish you. He said, call them. They won't listen to you. We can do anything to you. You guys are disunited. You guys have too much khiyana, betrayal. You guys stop each other in the back. You guys have no care for one another. You guys are proud of your colors and ethnicity and where you come from. You're proud of your whiteness. He's proud of his blackness. He's proud of his brownness. And only Islam united you, but you are going back to your cheap identification based on color. No. He kept calling. Nothing. The lion ate him. After a few days of digestion, and this is what they do all over the world, sucking the blood of poor nations. Huh? They can have enough. He comes again. He calls the brown guy, come, come, I need to talk to you. They're coming. But this time they're coming during the day. If your brother calls you, ignore him. You are brown, you look like the rocks. He can be seen. But your brother, he's black. Can be seen from far away during the day. So, same story happened. He called his black brother, nothing. His brown brother, nothing. So he ate the black bull. After digestion, and these guys never feel full. Always want to eat. He comes to the brown bull. He said, I am here. What should I do? He said, I was eaten. Laqad ukiltu, yawma ukila thawrul abyad. I was eaten the day the white bull was eaten. I'm afraid we will say that in next two, three, four, five years. It's getting nasty. You're not aware of that? But hate against Islam. I don't want to get into what led to it. When you have foolish, stupid people. Not stupid. Worse, stupid is not the word. That's an honor to be stupid for them. Who are going on the bridge, running over people. People who are filled with hate. They are taught by some, not ulama. Anything but ulama. Huh? So-called new scholars of the internet. Telling them, kill. Of course, people will say, what's going on? Like the guy in Misaga. He saw the news. He came out with a big baseball bat. Show me any Muslim. I will beat him up now. I don't care. They believe that we Muslims who pray and fast and this, they don't know these things. And raise money for hospitals and food bank. They don't see this. They see only the images of violence and stupid parrots. They don't even parrots are better than them. I don't know what the word is for them who are talking about Islam and say, we're going to slit the throat of every kafir. This is what they see. Don't watch those videos. We're going to They talk irresponsibly. So, oh, that's Islam. Well, we're going to hit them with the baseball bat. This is the kind of reaction, dangerous. When I said once here, three years ago, that this cancer needs to stop because it's spreading, the brother came, how dare you call our brothers cancer? I said, they are your brothers, not my brothers. Go join them. People talk like that. Many times people criticize because no sight. So how can we solve that? What I just said. We need to have think tank united. If we come closer to one another, we'll become closer to Allah. I don't want to sound pessimistic I am very optimistic but with reservation my brothers and sisters I know everybody's busy may Allah make it easy for you but I want to leave this message maybe I have a better message for you at the end of Ramadan next year if we're alive 
But if I die, you know, I don't meet you again, you will say he said it. My brothers and sisters, unity of the Ummah is a priority. And we can't come closer to one another unless we have love for one another. So let's learn how to love one another. When you finish Salat, shake hands and say, Taqabbal Allah. When you meet in Eid, you hug each other and Malaika are saying Salam to you. This is the spirit of Ramadan. So why do we fast? So we can become closer to Allah. How do we become closer to Allah? Aqrabu ma yakun al-abdu the closest a person can be to Allah is in a state of sujood. Where can I be in sujood? With the Muslims. What's the best thing to bring me closer to Allah? Is bringing people closer to one another. Starting with my parents, my family, my neighbors, and closer to humanity. Allahumma arhamna ya rabbal alameen. Wa alif bayna qulubina. Wajma' shamlana. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana. Wa sadaqatina. Wa aghfir lana. Allahumma innaka afawun. Tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna. Istaghfirullahina al-ghafur rahim.